Foundations. But there is a particular page in the Bible that actually needs to be torn out. I love it when Dr. Chuck Messer talks about this. He says it's the book between the Testaments. You need to tear that out and stop looking at the Bible as two separate books. Mm. Foundations, understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. In our last program, we learned that before Christ, the Jewish religious leaders believed Isaiah 53 was foretelling of the Messiah. But that view changed after Jesus. And we're going to continue to unpack this conundrum today to see if we can confidently unravel the apparent confusion and identity as to who Isaiah was talking about, particularly as we were saying in that last uh, episode about that innocent lamb that's Mm -hmm. there. You can see the persecution of the Jews, but you can't necessarily see sinlessness and innocence. Not at all. I've actually heard somebody make the claim that the Bible is a racist book because the Jews claim to be the chosen people of God. And therefore, they're claiming that they are above and better than everybody else. However, if that was the case, they've done a really lousy job of it because (laughs) in this book where God has chosen them, they go on then to detail every sin and wicked thing, every thought, every reprobate action they've ever taken. So they've presented themselves in a pretty poor light. They've done a pretty lousy job of it. Yeah. And that is, I guess, one of the great things, from my mind, of the Bible, that it, it paints the full picture. It doesn't just give all the, the highs, but it gives the lows as well, the, the, the ups and the downs. And you know, obviously the, the Jewish people are very much front and centre in that in the Old Covenant. Yeah, they are. Actually, they often say when it comes to being the chosen people, they, they kind of go, "Would God, would you mind just choosing somebody else for a little bit? Yeah. Because, you know, it's... It's been a very hard road for them. Mm, yeah. You know? Well, one example, I guess, and obviously we're looking at the, the book of Isaiah mm-hmm. at the moment, but from Isaiah 59, verses 3 to 8, it says, For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue mutters wickedness. No one enters suit justly. No one goes to law honestly. Their feet run to evil. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Desolation and destruction are in their highways. The way of peace they don't know, and there's no justice in their paths. They've made their roads crooked. No one who treads on them knows peace. I mean, that's an indictment yeah. of just how sinful a person has or a people has become. In in that regard, they're actually no different to the rest of the Gentile world. Mm. You know, a sinful human nature is represented there. But it's seen in every national people around the globe. Mm. And it doesn't matter whether they're wealthy or not or how advanced they are. Human nature is human nature. But it's a problem for the Jewish teachers who want to say that Isaiah 53 is talking about the Jewish people because in Isaiah 53, it's talking about an innocent lamb. So there's nothing innocent Mm. about the Jewish people in the same way there's nothing innocent about the Gentile world. So it's got to be talking about somebody else. And the other thing, too, is that in Isaiah 53, it's actually talking in singular form. Mm. The words used are singular. It's talking about an individual, one person. It's not talking in a plural context of a national people. So it doesn't even fit that way. Mm. And and as I um, you know, mentioned that in 1947, the Dead Sea Scrolls, were discovered and the portion of Isaiah 53 that had been previously removed was right smack bang in the middle. So yeah. therefore it, it becomes this it's gotta be it's gotta be dealt with. It has to be dealt with concisely. I can remember hearing a testimony um it was about uh, it was a Jewish man giving a testimony and how he had a Gentile friend who kept inviting him to come to church. And he really, really didn't want to go to church because he thought church is for Christians. I am Jewish and I'm not going to go to a Christian church. But his friend just sort of kept at him. kept and it was, Okay, all right, fine. I will come to church. But don't go shoving all that Jesus stuff down my throat. I'm not <laughs> interested. And during the, uh, the sermon and the message, he started to shake his head. He thought they can't help themselves. They just had to do it. I'm not interested in hearing about this Jesus and he died and, and all of this. I'm not interested. And then after the service, he said to, his friend asked him, he said, what did you think? Did you enjoy it? And rah, rah, rah. And he said, yeah, yeah, it was all right, whatever. He said, but, you know, it was a bit sneaky, you know, to throw in all of this Jesus stuff from your Bible. And he said, the pastor wasn't 
preaching from the New Testament. He was preaching from Isaiah 53 in the Old Covenant, Mm. from your book. He was so shocked because when the preacher was reading from Isaiah 53 to a secular Jewish mind, he actually said that is a picture of Jesus Christ from what he knew about him. Mm. And he promptly became a Christian. He became a Jewish believer in his Jewish Messiah. Mm. And, and and that is like that's this glorious power of the word of God yeah. and and the fact that Jesus Christ, a Jewish man who fulfilled Jewish prophecy, who died in Judea on a Roman cross at the behest and encouragement of the Jewish leaders at the time. Mm. And he died for his Jewish brethren and all of the early church was all Jewish, all of the apostles, all Jewish. And then after that, that's when the gospel went out to the rest of the world. So Mm. when it comes to who this Jewish Messiah is, it's extremely important that remember that he was Jewish. There are many, many Jewish people around the world today who are not aware that he was Jewish. And they're not even aware that the New Covenant is a Jewish book. Mm. They think that that's, that's the Christian's book. They can have that and we've got our Jewish book. But there is a particular page in the Bible that actually needs to be torn out. I love it when Dr. Chuck Messer talks about this. He says, it's the book between the Testaments. You need to tear that out and stop looking at the Bible as two separate books. Mm. It's one book written by over, what, 40 40 authors, authors, uh, 66 books. And it's, it's actually one book. And then you read it. In conjunction, the old and the new. Because what happens is is you get a lot of Jewish people say, I don't want anything to do with the new. It's a Christian book. I'm only going to stick with the old. And then you get a lot of Christians say, I don't need the old anymore. I'm only going to read the new. Mm. But the problem is you can't understand the new yeah. if you don't read the old. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes people go the other way. They'll stop reading. Christians get so excited about their Jewish Hebrew roots. They stop reading the new covenant and they only read the old. Yeah. You have to have both. It's talking about yeah. balance here. To quote Chuck Misler again, he talks about the fact that the Old Testament is in the New Testament revealed and the New Testament is in the Old Testament concealed. And I mean, obviously, as you were sharing that story of uh, the Jewish man who yeah. was listening to an Old Testament passage but seeing Jesus in it, well, that's just the way the Bible's been written. Exactly. And the, and the, this is the power of God's word. I mean, it's in. Uh, we're told in Proverbs, we're told in Psalms, we're told in Revelation that we are not to take away from God's word, we are not to add to God's word. Now, I understand why the rabbis were trying to take this portion of confusing scripture out because they thought they were protecting their people against this evil, evil, evil sect of the Christians. Mm. But by doing so, they've damned themselves. And then by trying to add alternate meaning or interpretation to what is clearly written in the scripture, they've also added to their judgment. Mm. It's a very dangerous thing to do. But that's that's warning to us as well. We're not allowed to do that. Yeah, exactly. And I guess Christians do it just as readily, don't they? They all <laughs> we do. reinterpret or misinterpret or you know look at one passage closely or and ignore others. So yeah, exactly. we're in the same boat. Precisely. And it's so important that we don't. We always keep it in its con- exactly why it's so important to keep it in its context. Old and New Testament together because Scripture interprets Scripture. And I know I've repeated this verse many, many times, and it is one of my all-time favorites, John (laughs) 5, 39, where Jesus was talking to the religious leaders. He said, you search the scriptures because you believe that in them that you have eternal life, but they are these that testify of me. The only scripture that Jesus and the apostles were teaching from in their day was the old covenant. And he's saying the old covenant completely reveals him. So Isaiah reveals him. Genesis 1 reveals him. And that's why it's really important that we don't don't shortchange ourselves by thinking that something old it means it's obsolete. I prefer the term first covenant and second covenant personally, but nobody understands what I'm saying. <laughs> but first and second covenant doesn't make either sound more important or less important or obsolete than the other. Mm. It's really, really important. Yeah. But everything points to Jesus, especially Isaiah 53. Once again, the notes have got a lot more information from these last two programs, so you can check those out online at vision.org.au slash foundations. But next time on Foundations, we're going to be looking at what the word Hebrew means. 
This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations.